is this you controlling the bar in the first phase of the lift and then dropping it down and bouncing it on the chest. Then you're potentially throwing away a lot of extra kilos on your bench. Let's talk about what happens when you do this. For most, the area just before the chest is the part that is the hardest to control. It's an area we are a bit weaker in, which makes it hard to control. And we're, we've already lowered the bar for some time and we get tired just before the chest and so we drop it the last centimeters. When you drop it, however, you lose tension. You lose your inner circle and the solid base of your bench. Now, here are some things that can happen as a result of this. You get out of position and press the bar more forward instead of up and slightly backwards towards the rack, which will make the lift heavier. You also might get stuck on the chest because in the chest muscle, we have a reflex muscle that helps us push the bar up if we maintain control and contracting it. If you drop the bar, you don't get this benefit and the solid base in your inner circle and your lower traps, lats and leg drive that is, gets diminished. So when you're about to press the bar up and slightly backwards, you don't have any force or power to transfer to the bar, only speed. And speed is a good thing, it's momentum. However, if you are at a very heavy weight that's heavy enough, that speed you might get off the chest, it won't be enough anymore to actually press the bar all the way up. So you will end up failing on the lift on the chest instead. And also if we look at a competition bench press as well here as our standard today, you always have a pause at the chest. And it's very common to see a bench press where you have the control in the first phase and then you go fast just before the pause and end up losing all the tension and get a pause that bounces a little. And this in competition, it will cause a lower or a slower press command. So the press command is not based on seconds, but on the second the bar is completely still. So if the bar bounces a bit, it won't be still, meaning more time on the chest during the pause and a longer time to get the press command from the referee because the referee will look at the bar looking at when it gets still. So if you bounce this, it will take a while until it will be still. And then once it's still, you will already have been there, down there on your chest for a long time, losing all the tension, losing all the speed you might have gotten if it were a touch and go bench, for example, and then get the press command. So you won't have the benefit of speed and it will be harder to press up the chest. This is why you could either press forward sometimes or while you just get stuck or it might get really, really heavy. So if instead you actually keep your control down with the most control just before your chest and not in the start, so you go a little bit faster and you slow down just before, you will be able to keep the bar still at the exact moment that it touches the chest, meaning a faster press command, less time on the chest waiting and more preserved speed and force through the press as your inner circle will be intact. However, it's also more than just thinking about maintaining control because usually it's a weakness and something that has to be trained and there are numerous ways to do this, all from variations to just a regular bench with a different mindset. So here are some things that you can think about. So focus on your inner circle and this is your leg drive driving towards the rack and your shoulder blades and your shoulder blades pinch together and lats engage and driven towards the glutes. You can enhance your inner circle by really slow tempos, high reps, and a sufficient warm up. So, real slow tempos where you go as slow as you can all the way down is great for this as it forces you to, instead of just lowering the bar really, really, really slow, to actively meet the bar rather than take the bar down. So, you rise your chest to get closer to the bar instead of lowering it to your chest. Basically, you keep the bar as still as you possibly can and just rise your chest more and more and more. This will cause your elbows to bend a little bit, which will cause the bar to actually go down to your chest. However, it will come from the chest and from meeting the bar, meaning your lower traps and your lats that will meet it. So that's the key here. Also, high reps, and I'm talking 10 reps, 15 reps, 20 reps, up to 40, 15 reps even. And this is good because here, after a few reps, most lose their tension. So you have to make sure here that your form never deviates in high reps, meaning no movement at all in your body, neither in the eccentric phase or the concentric phase. 
and you can never lose your position or the reps you're going to get are going to be sloppy. And if your reps are sloppy when you do high reps, this is not going to work. They have to be high reps that are perfectly executed because that can work even better than tempos as it truly challenges your form even further for a longer time with actual rest where you try to get the exact speed you would like to have in a competition with. Speed up the chest and actually going as fast as you can down without losing control. So you don't want to necessarily go super, super slow in a competition bench press because you're going to get too tired and may, might also get too tired or heavy from the chest. But you want to go as fast as you can, but with having this control. And this will mean a very, very slow in the beginning and gradually you will be able to increase the speed without losing the control. So you have to start really slow here. But so also, as well as you can also with high reps do even more volume work, so more bench press, but use lighter loads and you will get the same and even a better effect. And warm-ups, they are good because they help activate the right muscles so you can find them in your technique and you can use them even better in the lift. Also, I know you might think about well, what about long pauses or pin presses because they might also work, of course. However, I wouldn't say as well because high reps or tempos work probably better than long pauses because everyone can do a long pause and it usually just helps with the force from the chest but not the actual problem that occurs in the eccentric phase when you lower the bar so most of the time i do see athletes doing long pauses or pin presses but they're getting relaxed and losing their inner circle all together once they're at the bottom and then when they press up it's going to get heavy and they will have no momentum no uh, force from the chest and it will make it not as efficient for this problem at all because you have to remember that the lift is not two parts the way down and the way up but it's one lift the entire lift is from the lift up the eccentric phase and the concentric phase all of this is part of the lift so just training on the way up and then going down just as you want will not help you increase kilos to your bench so what's important here is to make sure to always analyze what the issue is that you want to improve and choose the right pathway for that. So pin presses and long pauses, they have a lot of benefits. I can't say anything else, but for this precise issue with a bounce on the chest, with a lacking pause, a loose, loss in control, that basically is just killing your bench press instead of doing it any good. I've never seen a good carryover from pin presses or long pauses to actually improve on this very issue. On other issues, it can be great. When it's just about pressing, once it gets heavy, that's another thing. But if you compare pin presses and long pauses to high reps and tempos for this exact issue in the eccentric phase and with the pause, it's not as good as high reps and tempos. I hope this helped and follow for more.